The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hello, I'm Carl Seidel, host of The People's View. The show is sponsored by the Nashua City Republican Committee. And if you like to attend our meetings at the second Thursday of every month at 6.30 at the Crown Plaza. And if you want to find out more about our organization, you can go to nashuagop.org uh, to see our website and learn about the events that we have. Welcome to The People's View. Hello, and help, uh, help me welcome uh, Suzanne Harvey, uh, representative from Ward 2. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Suzanne's on the uh, Science and Technology Committee. That's and right. uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that committee and how you've been, been involved in it, because I know you've been on for several terms. Right, right. Um, I've had two previous terms, uh, actually as vice chair of the committee. It's mm -hmm. called Science, Technology, and Energy. And now I'm back on the committee. Um, we deal with... Everything that has to do with the electric grid, you mm -hmm. want to turn on your lights, you have to make sure the grid has enough energy on it, energy sources. We deal with anything that has to do with renewable energy. Uh, we also deal with telecommunications, broadband. All those bills come to us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, the big thing this year uh, is a couple of attacks on our REGI program and RPS. And that's having a lot to do with renewable energy and uh, trying to bring more into the state um, so we're not using fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. uh, and also um, energy efficiency is a big issue in our committee. Um, if people understand energy efficiency, they understand that the less energy we use, the better off we are. We're not using fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. um, and any time you could close your window and lock up your house, either in the winter or summer, um, you're, and without the air conditioning, and um, you're, you're doing yourself better a favor. Better insulation. And yeah, like much that better nature. insulation. Yeah. yeah. I know. Uh, I've moved into a new house, and uh, it is really very it, worthwhile. It makes a difference. It mm -hmm. makes a difference. But unfortunately, right now the house budget um, rated our renew renewable mm -hmm. energy fund. Uh, $50,000 worth, and we're hoping that'll get reinstated by the Senate, and we'll, well see we what happens. we still have to wait and see what the Senate does. Right. We're seeing little things in the paper now that, you know, the nursing uh, homes are getting a little bit more, and right. so hopefully yeah. they'll, uh, you know, if the, if the economy is picking up, I think that's something we have to focus on, yeah. too, is put, developing the that, that nursing thing, uh, nursing home issue, is personal for me because my mother's in a nursing home, and I see if, if the... Um, ratio between staff and residents changes and there are fewer staff, mm -hmm. I think it starts to affect the safety of the mm -hmm. residents. So mm -hmm. I just hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I think they're also paying attention to some of those home services right. that are for the elderly. I know when my mother was up here before she passed away, she uh, used that quite substantially. That's an excellent service. Yeah. Excellent. And, and things like ServiceLink, we need to keep ServiceLink mm -hmm. available for our seniors especially. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens once the Senate and, and the governor gets her last pass at everything. So we'll see what happens. But in my committee, the big, the big uh, bill right now is about PSNH, which is now called Eversource. And they are an unusual company because not only do they provide us with energy so we could turn on the lights, turn on our air conditioner um, without it not happening. Um, <laughs> But they also generate their own power mm -hmm. and put it on the grid. Um, and that's very unusual for uh, a utility company. So they are partially uh, regulated because of that. So the big issue right now is they are probably going to divest all of their holdings in terms of energy sources. And it's a very complicated bill, very well, complicated. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, what they call it, these uh, costs that are that you have to recover for the yes, equipment yes. that they put in. Yep. So uh, yep. that's, uh, I don't know if that's going to work out. Right. right. And yeah. ultimately it'll go to the PUC and the yeah. Public Utilities Commission mm -hmm. and 
see what happens there. So that's what we're, we've been up to. Do you get involved with the gas pipelines too? A little bit. We've had some, um, some folks come in and teach us about what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, I think those kinds of decisions are left pretty much at the PUC and, and maybe even uh, in Washington at uh, maybe FERC, I'm not sure, some of the agencies. Well, I know from with. what I've been reading, uh, you have essentially two, one that's primary for uh, residential use and one is for uh, industrial use or, or um, power stations, two different pipelines oh. com coming into, uh, into New Hampshire. Yeah, well, if they come in. If yeah, they if in. they come in. Yeah. Uh, well, well, yeah, I was just wondering, that. do you get involved in any of these pricing things and, you know, the, the, how the uh, energy is sort of New England energy, I guess, and you, right. you, everybody sort of gets an even share. Yeah. But now I understand that Eversource is saying that they want to lower their rate instead of the high rate that jumped up in January. They have to go to the PUC on every rate change, uh -huh. whether it's up or down. And uh, that doesn't happen overnight when they ask for a change. Yeah. Does, does your committee get involved with setting any kind of guidelines for the PUC? Yes. Okay. Yes, a lot of those bills come to us. Yeah. So what kind of uh, guidelines do you get involved in in that? Oh, let's see. Um, sometimes we give them direction mm -hmm. as to what's more important or what, what should be given more um, mm -hmm. more influent, more, more time up for the, from the higher priority. Yeah, yeah, more priority, and um, we make it clear in the language of the bill mm -hmm. that, and and we have a lot of discussion about that because it's not everybody agrees. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, that would be new. <laughs> yeah, it would be new. Although we I have, have to say, our committee, the public works, is it's one of the probably gets get, uh, gets together more than gets unanimous uh, is, uh, votes more than anybody else. Really. Yeah, it's a strange, but uh, we argue, and then That's wonderful. we yeah. generally pass everything unanimously. It's nice when they go on consent. We don't have to worry yeah. about getting up and, yeah. and uh, arguing yeah. about it. Yeah. But this would also include, you said, broadband, too? Yes. And uh, how, how yeah. is that coming along? I know we're trying to make the state more broadband right. Right. collectively. Yeah, we haven't had too much of that this year, but there was uh, a couple of years ago, we always talked about the last mile. Mm -hmm. because it's very expensive for an individual company like Comcast or whomever to go out into the boondocks of uh, the state to serve maybe two homes. Um, but we want everybody to mm -hmm. have easy access and, and not have to deal with dial-up. And slowly but surely, we're making a lot, I think we've made a lot of progress with that. Does it all have to be by... Uh wire or does it can you use satellite on, on expanding the uh, broadband i don't know the answer to that okay yeah because i i have a satellite for the tv and uh -huh. i'm debating whether to get on that because they're promising a lot but i i haven't heard much oh. about how effective that is no i don't know because uh, i know uh we go through the phone system now and that mm -hmm. isn't as effective as i'd like it's a little yeah. bit slower and uh, uh erratic i guess i'd mm -hmm. say uh, so, anyway, I guess you'll be arguing about that, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also serve uh, uh, as the Nashua, I wouldn't say coordinator, president, or whatever president, <laughs> the title yeah. is, but for the uh, delegation, mm -hmm. there's 27 of us, 13 Republicans, and 14 uh, Democrats. Mm -hmm. And so you've uh, had uh, arranged meetings with the uh, aldermen and the stuff alderman. like that. Right. Uh, how is that? Uh, have you done that before? Or is this your first year? No, it's the first time I've done this, but mm -hmm. it's mainly um, organizing things, trying to make sure that when there's something that the whole delegation needs to know about, whether it's a meeting with the alderman or mm -hmm. a meeting with the mayor, which we had about the budget, um, that everybody gets an email, everybody's on board, and um, hopefully people read their emails so <laughs> they, they understand that a meeting is being called. Yeah. Um, and we understand that not everybody could make every meeting. Some mm -hmm. people work at night or whatever. But, um, you know, it's mainly an organizing position. And, uh, you know, I did try to get us together for, another, for an issue-oriented meeting, mm -hmm. but there was too much snow, and that never happened. But, um, 
Well, you yeah. think you're going to get another bite at the apple, as they say, when the Senate comes back and uh, put something into the hopper again, the things that the, the House turned down? Well, I don't know. I think, I think it would be very good if we could have a meeting with the aldermen when we see the Senate budget. Mm -hmm. I know how busy the aldermen, you know, the whole board yeah. is um, with their own budget for the city. But um, if we could meet, that would be, that would be helpful because... The current budget, the House budget, is not good for Nashua. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll see some improvements. Well, I yeah. think you'll see a lot of this, uh, not, uh, the HHS type issues going away because I, I keep hearing that, yeah, we find this money, they have some money left over and, you know, all these little things. I, I think sometimes I wonder if HHS isn't too big because they... You know, they're probably the last ones to really know how much money they spent. Yeah. Uh, well, the Senate has an advantage in seeing more, oh, yeah, more revenue mm -hmm. than the House does at, when mm -hmm. the House has to do their budget. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, hopefully there's a better time. But, there. Uh, you know, on the, on the rail program, for example, my committee voted that down, and I was so surprised at the overwhelming uh, on both sides that uh, uh, the rest of the state didn't want that. Wow. No, that's too I mean, bad. Uh, I even tried to get a uh, uh, half of the apple, if you will, I guess, as for uh, two thousand two million dollars, and uh, to study. I thought the intermodal aspect of that review a little bit more to see whether Nashua could fit in on that, and they got only six votes out of the twenty. Wow. And, wow. Uh, so uh, that would have have a very tough time, even if the Senate put some something back. It would be such a boon to mm -hmm. the southern tier. Well, it's, they're not convinced. Absolutely. I mean, we're just doing something now for the for the North Country. Well, we're not sure yet. Well, well maybe. <laughs> yeah. So I I think I think rail will come. It's just a matter of time. But see the, the see the North Country too. What they're doing, it's not any expenditure. It's right. only That's right. it's only a guarantee of right. the notes, That's which right. may or may not. I mean, only if they default do you have a financial uh, a problem. But the other one, you're going to issue state notes, mm -hmm. which uh, isn't mm -hmm. uh, very is, different. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it is different. People, I don't think understood that. I mean, it looks like somebody's railroading the whole project through, mm -hmm. and I, uh, obviously a lot of people don't like that aspect yeah. of it. But it's the only method we have for increasing, for helping people join, uh, come, come into New Hampshire and start a business. Uh, as somebody put it when we voted on it, uh, it's the only quiver we have in our hour. I mean, yeah. only yes. hour we have in a quiver. Yeah, I saw that. I uh, that. Yeah. And, and then we, uh, we took away some of the money that the uh, Dred had for uh, traveling to try to bring people in. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, that, that, that's one thing that I'm very interested in. I think New Hampshire can service, a, bring in a lot of companies because they really don't know. We have two problems. We have an energy problem as far as costs are concerned, and we have a taxing problem. Uh, but if, once you bring them here, sometimes they see some of the other advantages mm -hmm. that we have. And I found out that there are certain local uh, groups that are trying to build up the economy around Portsmouth or for example, or some other, that use that uh, methodology to get the smaller companies in, mm -hmm. to get them started, you know, mm -hmm. for maybe a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars or something mm -hmm. like that. Incentives. And, yeah. yeah, and yeah. so, and, and they have such a, it, it is independent, and the, uh, was it the, uh, I can't remember the initials now, B F N F or something mm -hmm. like that group is independent and evaluates everything separately. Mm -hmm. And uh, only then, you know, does they go through. And their failure rate's only like 3%. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. excellent. Yeah. I and mean, if I was a banker, yeah. I'd love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, it, it works on a very small scale. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think if we keep that going, we should yeah. get more, more and more companies and some that will grow. Well, I'd love, just to change the subject a minute, I'd love okay. to... Uh, mention something that's coming up in Nashua soon on the 21st. Um, a bunch of people in the community got together and we're planning an event between the, um, the community and the police department. And um, it's basically for uh, groups that 
may interact a little more with the police. Um, people, um, the, the diverse communities in our, in our city um, who may not feel that they have a voice. And basically the police have, uh, the chief has been working with us and some of his um, lieutenants. And um, on the 21st at Revere College at the Dion Center uh, at 5.30, um, we're going to have an event where the community can actually talk to the police and the mm -hmm. police can talk to the community. So it's a conversation. We're calling it community conversation and um, on race and justice. Good. And uh, there's going to be a bus, free transportation, from the bus station right off Main Street uh, to Riviere at 5 and 5.15. Mm -hmm. And then a bus will wait to take everybody back okay. who needs a ride to the bus station. Is so there, be, what agenda do they have? Well, are they going to talk about certain topics or just open? We've got um, a list of questions and we'll be at different tables with sort of a, a host at each table to ask the questions and then do a wrap up what people came up with at each table. Um, but it really, actually I made the initial email mm -hmm. to a bunch of my friends and said, this was after Ferguson, uh, a couple of weeks later, and I said, you know, we really should do something proactive. I don't want to see something like that happen in Nashua. Mm -hmm. I, obviously Nashua isn't Ferguson, but I just thought doing something proactive for the community would be a good thing. Mm -hmm called in the chief, he was right on board with it. We've had several planning meetings. We have one more planning meeting and we've got posters around the city and um, hopefully we'll have a nice turnout. Uh, yeah. so they're gonna touch on the drug problem in town. Hopefully, okay. hopefully, yeah. I mean, mainly it's to get better communication. Mm -hmm. um, Manchester had a similar uh, event that I hadn't heard of until later. Um, but it's, it's turned out to be a great, um, a great event to, to plan and put together for the community, whether it's the Hispanic community, the, um, the people of color, um, you know, any, anybody from a diverse background who, who wants to have this commu uh, communication with the police department. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be friendly, it's gonna be respectful, and um, I think it'll good things will come out of it. Yeah, it sounds yeah. good. Yep. Uh, yep. You can put on one of the, uh, like a public announcement yep. on, the, on the TV show. Yeah, yeah. So we can uh, do that. Yeah. Uh, if you had anything on, on uh, drug uh, usage, I have a, a film, a Brain on Cocaine. Have you ever heard of that? No. It was given out. I worked for DuPont uh -huh. and an outreach mm -hmm. uh, thing that we had, and uh, we made we made these radioactive drugs that uh, made uh, managed to, to look at the blood flow through the brain oh. and you could see the difference in the blood flow mm. of a person's on drugs mm -hmm. and how much of the brain was really not getting nourished with mm -hmm. the blood mm -hmm. uh, it was almost in, in case like people on crack cocaine it was as bad as an alzheimer's patient it's like that film, I think it was an advertisement many years ago, of uh, a, sort of an x-ray vision of someone inhaling a cigarette yeah. and yeah. what the smoke does as it goes down into yeah. the lung. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah we, uh, DuPont made a couple of thousand of those and gave them out to junior uh -huh. high schools okay. uh, back in the early 90s. Yep. And, yep. You know, it's something that uh, I haven't seen and I don't think yeah. you know, people have it anymore. There's, there's one other thing I'd like to mention. Sure. Um, uh, one bill that, uh, that I did this year that I put forward, uh, looks like it'll pass. It's, it's gone through the House and it's gone through the Senate committee. Um, it has to do with people who have been convicted of a Class B misdemeanor. The B is not a serious crime. Misdemeanor A, you get jail time usually. Bs, you don't. So for some reason on our, in our statutes, if you've been convicted of a misdemeanor A or B, you have to wait three years before you can petition the court for an annulment of your record. Um, and I didn't think that was fair because the A is such a more mm. serious crime. Um, so I asked it to be two years for, for a B. Mm. And uh, it's gone through the House, it went through the Senate committee, and now the full committee. 
uh, the full standard should hear it this week, and I don't think it'll be a problem. Mm -hmm. So for me, looking at why I did it, um, when people go for a job interview and they're filling out an application or they are um, renting an apartment or borrowing money, oftentimes on the application there's a question that says, have you ever been convicted of a crime that hasn't been annulled? And if you can say yes, you have, or, or rather no, um, you have such a better chance of, of go, getting on with your life. Mm -hmm. And I think the two-year wait, you have to be clean. You can't have any, you know, mm -hmm. hassles with the, the law in those two years. And it's still up to the judge. It's not mm -hmm. a bill that says, you know, it won't be a statute that says two years and you're fine. Um, it's still up to the judge. But at least instead of a three-year wait, which yeah. is really a long time, it's a two-year wait. Well, yeah. hopefully you get through. Well. Yeah. Because you don't hear much about some of these small bills. I know. I consider it a small bill, yeah, but it yeah. could help a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, we're going into uh, the last two months. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's going to be a tough uh, June or not? With the budget? <laughs> I, I don't ever remember an easy budget. No. Um, yeah, I think there'll be some... But it's Some looking headlines. better, isn't it? Than, uh, I hope so. Yeah, I hope than, so. Uh, what uh, people were worrying about. I hope before. so. I mean, we and the papers don't help at all. Uh, no. You know, the papers play up the things that they yeah. know get people excited. But, you know, you, you care about things like our university system. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to get dinged bad. You care about service link. I do. Um, you care about meals on wheels. You care about people with disabilities. And you just don't want to hurt people. You know? Well, I, I understand that too. And one of the problems I have, looking at it in a slightly different perspective, I think we have enough money if it was used better. I don't see people looking at, looking back and trying to do things better. Uh, just bring up a couple of issues, a couple of things that I saw in the last couple of months. Uh, some of the audit reports, you know, we have an auditing mm -hmm. function. And they look both at the financial part and the performance the process. And uh, people came in asking for some money under the capital improvement, which really should have been operating funds, mm -hmm. not, not a mm -hmm. capital fund. But they came in and said, well, we're correcting something that was on the 2010 audit. Okay, well, it takes five years to do that, you know. And you could have found some way of doing some of it. I mean, this happened to be a very mundane thing of, yeah. of how, to, how to save records, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But that, plus I've had uh, one of my constituents come to me about the way they process some of these uh, applications for a license. Some groups are very good. They got like the, what the judiciary has done with computers is something terrific. Mm -hmm. But they had to be almost kicked into it back in 2011 mm -hmm. to put in that call, that, uh, call center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they got a, I guess we, we bribed them with a million dollars <laughs> worth of money. If you do it, they brought it in under budget, less time, and now it's the best thing that, you know, they learn more about all the groups, all the counties together rather than having them separated and isolated. And uh, now they've then uh, small claims court can do everything on the computer now. Mm -hmm. But some other agencies are still handling paper. Can't get them into the computer world. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think we can do a lot more if we look at our operation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you, you can get more for your money. Probably true. And uh, mm -hmm. that's what I like to see more of, uh, uh, initiative. And maybe the governor sees it but hasn't been able to do it. I mean, she put in for a, a chief operating officer, which probably would look at it. But the way she wanted to set it up is not the way a, man a manager would set it up. She wanted to isolate them and sort of have that little uh, fiefdom of a COO and seven people. So I couldn't see how that would function because mm -hmm. they would have no real control. They would find problems maybe, but they don't have the control of having having well, either the governor or the commissioner to change the operation, mm -hmm. change the process. So anyway, that's mm -hmm. my, the way I'm looking at yeah. it. And I think we can, uh, we can do a lot more for the money we do have. That would be good. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see how it goes, and yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe we'll uh, get together with the Alderman again and see how great. we can do yeah. that for, yeah. for Nashua and see uh, yeah. what, uh, you know, maybe you can also let me know what uh, people on your side of the fence uh, look at uh, this, and uh, we can bring those and have another discussion mm -hmm. in the future. Okay. Okay? It's great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you Suzanne. very much. And thank you for listening in. I'd like to remind you all that uh, on the second Thursday of the month, the Nashua City Republican Committee has a meeting at the Crown Plaza, and you'll see two candidates at this uh, coming Thursday. Uh, that will be uh, the uh, two candidates for the mayor. Uh, and uh, why don't you come down? It'll start at 7 o'clock on Thursday. Thank you. seating program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.